And I was like, what? And she's like, you guys need to get out right now. wonderful service dog Bailey um, she's just chilling in the back we actually just got home from getting my flu shot and I figured I'd let you guys know how that went it was fine in terms of like I got my flu shot um, I didn't pass out which I you know often do which was good um, which was fine but then like Everything leading up to that was kind of crappy. Um, I had heard from other handlers at my school that um, sometimes, like, the health center gives you a lot of crap, um, specifically the security guard, because the university has a um, registration tag that they give out to all the service dogs in training or puppy raisers on campus, um, because in the state that I'm in, um, service dogs in training don't have public access rights unless they're with a certified trainer. These puppy raisers are not certified trainers. Um, so they take them to class and into like academic buildings and things. Um, but they like, so the university in order to allow that assigns like registration tags. Um, they offer these optionally to fully trained service animal handlers. Um, and that's partially where the issue is. Honestly, there are other ways they could um, show that these animals should be on campus. Um, basic behavior would be one, um, but that's a, what they should be doing is a whole other story. Um, but what happened to me today is I went to the health center. I heard that the security guard was going to give me trouble. So he stopped me at the front and he was like, um, have I checked you before? And I was like, no, she's a fully trained service dog. And he was like, oh, she's fully trained. Cool. Go ahead. And I was like, yes, I got through the hard part. I made it. Um, and then lo and behold, um, I like get checked in, like all this stuff. No one says a word to me. And then they call me back to go get my flu shot. And the moment I'm in the back, three workers, I don't know if like one, one of them was the nurse that gave me my shot, but, um, a nurse, someone who was at the front desk, and then someone else start debating in front of me whether or not they should let me get my flu shot today. And I was like, I tried to explain. I was like, so the red tags are really only for, um, like, the animals in training. She's fully trained. As you can see from her behavior, um, you know, she's she can come with me. Like, the only place she wouldn't be allowed to come is like an OR burn unit whatever and then I was like about to pull out my ADA like law card and then um, they like start arguing with me and they were like well we've had people get bitten before and all this stuff and then the nurse um, basically just like cut me off when I was about to hand her this law card and was like whatever I'll get in trouble it's fine I'm gonna break all the rules you're just gonna get your flu shot today and I was like okay do you want the law card like and she was like no and then we get into the room um, and I tell her like a couple like things that I always tell people before I get a shot like a, like so I pass out sometimes if I pass out this is how my dog's going to react if my if I am going to pass out um, my dog might like do X Y or Z to like keep me from passing out and they, she was like oh and then she used that as a way to like ask some super invasive questions and I have an issue where like if people are asking if if a member of the general public is asking me an invasive question I'll just say if it's personal medical information I don't want to share that but if a medical professional starts asking me these questions like I get really uncomfortable because I don't know how much I'm supposed to be telling them like you're giving me my flu shot you don't need to know like all of my issues but at the same time I'm like they're a medical professional they should put this in my file and then at the same time I'm like I, I know this is in my file because I submitted this information last week when I scheduled this freaking appointment um, so 
she just started asking all these invasive questions and then questions that weren't even related. And then she like asked something about like why I don't have her tagged. And I was like, oh, well, like I don't need to. Like this is the reason why. And then she cuts me off in the middle of my sentence explaining why I don't need to have this registration. And she like just was like, okay, so when was your last period? And I was like, oh, like, let me check. I have like an app. Like, I don't remember. And then she just keeps like rattling off all these questions. And I felt like I was getting interrogated. She was like, and like asking all like the regular questions that you ask someone, like, have you ever had an allergic reaction? Like to a, to a flu shot? Like what allergies do you have? But she was rattling them off so fast that I couldn't answer them. And then she was like getting frustrated that I wasn't answering quick enough. And I was like, okay, oh, uh, okay. And then like in between questions while I was like trying to like answer, she would just like start rattling off questions about my dog. And I was like, this is not, uh, uh mm. and I was just like completely overwhelmed. Um, but you know, then she was like, okay, well, we'll like lean back the chair. Like, thanks for letting me know about the dog. That's so cool. Whatever. And then she keeps, then she starts telling me how she's going to get in huge trouble because she's not allowed, like they're not allowed to let any dogs in that don't have that tag and blah, blah, blah. And people have gotten bitten in the past and telling me all this stuff. And I was like, yes, I understand. Like, let me explain the law. Like you won't get in trouble. And if you do, you should tell them the law or tell them to contact DRC because like, or the disability resource center on campus, um, because, you know, you guys should know how much, what you're allowed to ask and things like that. And, um, she, she just like cut me off and was like, cool. So let me give you your shot now. And like, didn't give me any sort of like countdown warning. She just like grabbed my arm, wiped it in. And that might work for some people. But when I just told you that I often pass out and that like, I would like to be prepared, like that means please let me know if you're about to give me a shot because I want to know if I'm about to pass out. Like what? Um, so she did that and then Bailey started tasking cause I got really, really dizzy. Um, and she was like, okay, so just to avoid like, just in case you have any sort of reaction or you pass out like later, like, um, how about we keep you for 30 minutes? And I was like, okay, do you want me to stay in the waiting room or do you want me to stay here? And she was like, oh, stay here. Like, it's no problem. And then, um, you know, Bailey tasked for about like five minutes. And then like, um, I had her laying down on the floor for the rest of it. And then, um, the woman like kept coming in to check on me, which was good. Like she kept the door like well propped open a little bit so that like they could keep an eye on me. Um, which is good. Like, making sure that the person who said that they pass out and have reactions doesn't have a reaction, right? But then after 10 minutes, she walks in and she goes, okay, you now you need to get out. And I was like, what? And she's like, you guys need to get out right now. It's like, oh, okay. And like, you know, Bailey wasn't tasking anymore. I felt fine. And so we left, but and then I like, I was leaving and I was like, didn't she just say that we had 30 minutes? Like, and my old school used to keep us for 20 minutes, um, but they would keep us in the waiting room. I don't know if she needed to use the room or what the deal was. I'm no expert, but her bedside manner was not great. Um, it was very, almost like aggressive, like the way she was asking the questions and the way she said to get out. Um, but then I left and I, I called my um, disability support center on campus and I was like, just FYI this happened. And they were like, oh, great well we'll let someone know and I was like okay is there someone like specifically in charge of this and they were like no but we'll like let the equal opportunity on people equal equal opportunity um, people on campus handle it and I was like okay should I call them next time like I also don't understand why our disability center on campus is handing out these registration tags to the puppy raisers because the puppy raisers aren't like the the puppy raisers don't go through disability services to get the dog on campus except for the tag because they're not like they don't need to have like their disability like verified for access or anything like that 
if I guess if someone like is training their own service animal or they have a service animal in training that is for them, they could then use that. But I don't know why the puppy raisers are going through them and not. I don't know. This whole it it seems messy. Um, but now that I've rambled for like ever about this experience, um, I'm gonna take Bailey girl. Bailey, hi. Are you a cutie? What's up? She's like, why are we just sitting in the car, mom? Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go do some homework, get something done with my day, but thank you so much for watching and we will see you in our next video. Thanks, bye. Bailey, say goodbye. Hey, it's not nap time, we're about to leave.